continue talking about planetary motions in space and look at Kepler's second law. And that is the law of equal areas. Now, the law of equal areas states that a line joining a planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. So what this means is that as a planet moves closer to the sun, it will move faster due to the greater gravitational attraction between the sun and that planet. So let's look at a diagram to visualize this. This means that this area between the sun and the planet is the same. It is an equal area to this angle and this almost triangle that it makes between this planet and the sun. So because of those equal areas, it will take the same amount of time to go from one to two as it would go from four to three. It's slower as it goes away from the sun. However, it goes faster as it goes closer to the sun. And because of this dynamic, and because the areas are equal, it actually will take the same amount of time to go from location to location. So as I said, it takes the same amount of time to go from one to two as it does to get to three, to, from three to four. And this diagram just shows how it creates an equal area. Although this distance here is farther from the sun, this area is closer but more spread out. So those areas are equal. When a planet is closer to the sun, it is experiencing a greater gravitational attraction. So it literally is being pulled around the sun. So therefore, it moves at a greater orbital velocity as it goes around the sun. <clears throat> Let's look at a short video, video animation of this. Now, I want you to watch the planet, and you'll see that it's moving. As it moves from one spot to the next, it casts like an, a triangular section or an area. And due to Kepler's laws, that area is equal all around. So you see as it goes farther away, we call this the aphelion. We're going to talk about that term a little later in the video. <clears throat> what I want you to notice now is the increase in speed. right there. Did you notice a change? As it came around closer to the sun, it gets faster. Now this is known as perihelion as it's closest to the sun. When it's at the farthest end of uh, the orbit where, or farther away from the sun, we call it aphelion. So I'm showing this again. You can see the change, how it tends to slow down in this area. Aphelion is when it reaches the furthest point away from the sun in its orbit. Watch again how this planet, as it gets closer, it speeds up. And there we go. So we'll stop the animation and we'll continue taking notes. So now we're going to look into Kepler's third law. And Kepler's third law states that the period of revolution or the time it takes to complete one year for a planet is directly related to the planet's distance from the sun. So this actually makes a little sense if you think about it. What this means is that the closer the path is to the sun, the shorter or smaller the orbital path. And so therefore, it takes less time for the planet to complete one revolution. It's faster speed of, of revolution. So let's take a look at some of these orbits of the planets. The ones that are closer to the sun, you notice, have a shorter path, a smaller orbital path, and therefore they move faster around the sun. The ones, the outer planets, the Jovian planets, they have a longer path and therefore taking a longer time to revolve around the sun. So in your notes, you'll take down that the further away from the sun, the planets have a larger orbital path and therefore have a longer distance to travel and a slower speed of revolution. Here's a picture of the first four inner planets, the terrestrial planets. And you notice even between these four planets, the one closest to the sun, Mercury, has a shorter path than this, the um, planet 
uh, Mars. <laughs> so here's a picture of both the terrestrial planets and the Jovian planets. And you notice that the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, have a much shorter orbital path and therefore take uh, faster to go around the sun than the Jovian planets. Their, uh, their paths are much longer and their speed of revolution is slower. So let's compare the two, the terrestrial versus the Jovian. Which planets orbit the sun the fastest? Well, that would be the terrestrial. Which planets require the least amount of time to complete one revolution? Again, that would be the terrestrial. They're closer to the sun. And which planets have the shorter orbital paths? Once again, the answer is the terrestrial. Now, this question, as a planet's distance from the sun increases, what happens to its orbital velocity? So as you saw in that animation, as the sun, uh, planet moves away from the sun, as its distance increases, the orbital velocity decreases. It moved slower in its path. So let's talk about some of the effects that the planet's distance will have. Due to the elliptical shape of the orbit, the planet may be closer or farther from the sun during their revolution. And we know this when we studied seasons, we talked about this a little as well. This change in distance from the sun causes a planet to speed up or slow down in its orbit as it revolves. So this location one in the orbit around the sun is gonna move slower because it's farther away. Whereas number two is gonna be moving faster in its orbit because it's closer to the sun. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of us? Well, as I mentioned, we talked about this a little with seasons and we see that in your orbital path at different times of the year, we are in a different location around the um, sun. So the orbital speed of the planet will depend on how close it is to the sun. So the closer the sun, the faster orbital speed. So in this instance, you see here, we're closer to the sun during winter and we're farther away from the sun in summer. So we're gonna have different rates of rotate revolution based on that. So during winter, the earth is closer to the sun and therefore in winter, the earth moves faster because it experiences that greater gravitational attraction. In the summer, the Earth is farther away from the sun, and during the summer, the Earth would then move slower around its path as it revolves. So in winter, we are considered to be at the perihelion, and as I mentioned earlier, the perihelion is considered to be the distance as we are closest to the sun. Now, this has to do with the apparent diameter because when we're moving closer to the sun, it actually makes the sun look bigger. The change in distance to, from the earth to the sun causes the sun's apparent diameter to change. So as I mentioned before, the perihelion is when it's closest to the sun and it gives the appearance that the sun is much larger. When we're farther away in the summertime, it gives the appearance that the sun is smaller. That's known as aphelion. So aphelion is the earth being farthest away from the sun in its revo revolution and perihelion is when it's closest to the sun in its revolution. We can also talk about this in terms of the moon because the moon is revolving around us and it has similar terms. When the moon is closest to us, it is known as perigee. When it's farthest away, it's known as apogee. And it just appears to look bigger when it's closer at the perigee and it appears to be smaller when it's farther away at its apogee. We're going to end here for now, and we'll continue talking about space and astronomy as we go further into our unit. I hope you got all those notes down. Rewind and go back and re-listen if there were some things that were confusing to you, and definitely make a circle or star in your notes if you want me to go over anything when I see you. Have a great day.